Excellent. What's up guys, I am not at Computex this year, but that is not gonna stop me from doing Computex coverage. So this is my first Computex video because Lisa Sue just finished AMD's first Computex keynote ever. Uh, it's not their first time visiting Computex, just their first time doing a keynote. And I have good news and bad news. The good news is we have some great new info and release dates for third gen Ryzen. The bad news is when it comes to Navi news, the news was a little bit slimmer. There's just a single demo that they shared as well as some architecture and naming updates. So I'm going to structure this video Video by doing the important stuff first. We have three upcoming products based on third gen Ryzen that have been announced and confirmed. We have a Ryzen 7 3700X, which is an eight core 16 thread CPU for $329. It has 36 megabytes of cache, a 4.4 gigahertz boost and 3.6 gigahertz based and only a 65 watt TDP. That sounds like a pretty nice chip for $330. They followed that up with the Ryzen 7 3800X, which is an eight core 16 thread chip as well. But this time it'll boost up to 4.5 gigahertz with a 3.6 gigahertz base clock and a 100 105 watt TDP. So we have a 40 watt TDP increase for the 3800X for a 100 megahertz boost to its uh, top speed. Anyway, that's kind of weird. But moving on, the hugest news I think is that we now have confirmation that we have a Ryzen 9 series coming at us. They've only shared the 3900X so far, which is a 12 core and 24 thread CPU. We do have news that there's probably going to be 16 core versions as well, but more on that in just a second. This one's going to sell for $499 MSRP with 70 megs of cache, a 4.6 gigahertz boost clock, and a 3.8 gigahertz base, and still a 105 watt TDP. So so the 3900X 12 core is going to be 500 bucks and they did demo it. They actually had a few demos and for that test they tested it against the 9920X which sells for $1200 right now. But I'm getting ahead of myself. But one random thing I wanted to mention really quickly is that AMD accidentally pre-streamed some of this information. They were, the stream was live and they were doing a rehearsal. So some of this information actually leaked out pretty early. I think Tweaktown picked it up as well as a few other news sources. But going back to sort of the fundamentals of Ryzen 3, or Ryzen third generation, Ryzen 3000 series CPUs and what it is, we found out all this information at CES, but they're based on the seven nanometer manufacturing process going to be put together by TSMC. So these are Zen 2 cores, which are based on the second generation Zen architecture as opposed to the sort of in-between Zen Plus that they did last year with the 12 nanometer launch of the Ryzen 2000 series. Still using socket AM4 motherboards, so we're going to have some backwards compatibility, but we are going to have some new motherboards coming out as well. And then yes, PCI Express Gen 4 support. Now it comes to the CPU core, they did some comparisons, and these are just AMD numbers, but looking at Zen Plus 12 nanometer versus Zen 2 7 nanometer, they say they're getting two times the floating point performance. They have doubled the cache size and this is specifically to reduce memory latency which should be very helpful for gaming and then they said they were aiming for about an 8% IPC improvement but they actually hit 15% again according to AMD's numbers but if that is true and if that maintains being true then that's Pretty good news for AMD, pretty good news for anyone who's uh, looking to buy one of these CPUs and uh, probably pretty bad news for Intel because that was one of their biggest selling points for their current generation of processors. But I don't want to get too ahead of myself there either. They did run some demos that I wanted to share with you. Cinebench R20 was the demo that they ran for the 3700X, so the entry level as far as what they've shown us so far, versus a 9700K. So we're going uh, an eight core 16 thread CPU versus an eight core eight thread CPU. And I wasn't able to see the final scores, but according to Robert Halleck, who never lies, uh, it was about 30% faster, the 3700X, which you would hopefully expect since we're dealing with a lot more threads. But the second demo they ran was PUBG, a gaming demo. This was with a 3800X versus a 9900K, so trying to show of the best gaming performance that uh, Intel can provide what is AMD now able to put up against it. Again, this was sort of an AMD centric test because it's a test that they put together, but with PUBG, they were getting about the same performance, 145 to 150 FPS. So if they can maintain equivalent performance when it comes to graphics, with these new CPUs, especially compared to in Intel's best, uh, then that's pretty good news. Because again, that is an area where Intel has formerly had a lead, but we'll see if they can hang on to that. The final demo was for the high-end chip, and this was using Blender, testing the $1,200 9920X which is on their high-end desktop platform with the X299 chipset. Uh, that got 38 seconds in the Blender render versus the 3900X's 
32 seconds, so about 18% faster, and according to them, this was a core-to-core -core test, although we can't exactly verify that uh, both of these chips were running at the same frequency across all cores, so we should take this with a grain of salt until we can see some independent third-party testing, but it does look promising. The final demo that they shared was a sort of full demo with their entire ecosystem, since AMD makes processors as well as graphics cards with their Radeon division. We did the 3800X, so the $400 eight core 16 thread CPU in a Navi demo with the new Radeon RX 5700 from the RX 5000 series, which is gonna be what Navi is manifested as. And they were testing that against a system with a 9900K and a 2080 Ti, which should be pretty much the best possible gaming system you can put together right now. The test they ran though was a 3D Mark feature set test. So this is really focused on like how much potential there is with the system setup. So they were really testing PCI Express Gen 4 bandwidth versus Gen 3, and so it was 69% more bandwidth available with the new system with PCI Express Gen 4. I don't think they were specifically trying to say that a Radeon RX 5700 and a 3800X will beat a 9900K and a 2080 Ti in pure gaming, but if that's the impression you walked away with, then I'm sure AMD marketing is like, yes, we're doing our job well. What they're talking about is that you get more bandwidth with PCI Express Gen 4, but I don't think that will immediately equate to better performance in gaming. We'll have to wait and see. It should just be a slight difference because most graphics cards don't even use the bandwidth that's available with PCI Express Gen 3. A few other things that I noted though, uh, one was that when they finally said, yes, we have a Ryzen 9 family, we're going beyond eight cores and 16 threads on the mainstream platform. Lisa brought out a Zen 2 chip uh, or basically a substrate with the chips on it. And yes, we are confirmed that we have two Zen 2 chiplets on it. So the blank space that we sort of pointed out back in CES was like, hey, why'd they design it like that? It seems like maybe they're thinking about putting two of those on there. Yes, that is confirmed. That is what they did. So uh, we were right and we were very smart. Pat on the back. Uh, also, Asus stopped by to say hi, and just to give a little bit of a uh, further preview of their X570 boards, they showed an X570 Pro and said that they have 30 more designs that Asus is working on for this platform. Of course, there's gonna be motherboards from Gigabyte and MSI, and I'm sure a lot of those are gonna be shown this week at Computex. There is some more information that has been floating around though, specifically Gamers Nexus, if you didn't already see it in the recent hardware news video, has said that they have confirmed with their sources in the industry that yes, there will be 16 core Ryzen 3000 series CPUs, AMD hasn't confirmed anything beyond that 12 core that they just announced, but uh, hopefully we will see 16 core versions as well. And they said that when overclocked, they're pushing 300 watts when it comes to power draw, which is a lot, but that's overclock numbers. So um, just some info, I think, from some of the vendor partners who have been testing with early samples of the chips. Also, the X570 chipset uh, apparently has an 11-watt TDP, uh, which is a bit more, and that's because of the PCI Express Gen 4 integration, and uh, that is why a lot of the new motherboards have actual fans on the chipset heat sinks, which I don't really like usually, but hopefully the fans they're using are better than the fans they used back in the mid-2000s, back when they had to put chipset heat sinks on, and they would get loud and noisy, and I hated them. But anyway, we also have uh, PCI Express Lane confirmation. There's still gonna be 16 on the CPU uh, for direct PCI Express Lane connection, and then there will still be the four dedicated for an extra M.2 slot. I'm guessing that also means they're gonna have four more going over to the chipset for multiplexing across there for the peripheral controller hub and everything. And then Steve also shared some dates, which I was able to then cross compare and confirm or deny based on what AMD said at this event. Uh, June 10th is the first upcoming date and that's when they're supposed to have an announcement at E3. Steve said it was a Ryzen 3000 series desktop announcement, but I feel like that's what they just did. So maybe this is gonna be Navi because at the event they actually said June 10th, we're gonna have some more information on Navi. And in fact, they're going to have a live stream on June 10th at 3 p.m. Pacific time. So I would say follow AMD on Twitter if you maybe wanna find out more info on that event when they make it available. July 1st though is when Ryzen 3000 series as well as X570 motherboards will be up for pre-order, which you shouldn't do. You should always wait for independent reviews, but I suppose you, there's some people who are gonna pre-order anyway. Uh, but then July 7th, 7-7 seven, seven for seven nanometer, which makes total sense and has also been predicted for quite some time is when performance reviews will go up as well as when actual Ryzen third gen products will ship. So if you pre-ordered, they probably ship right away. Maybe they arrive to you on July 7th. Maybe you can just go into the store and buy them on that day. So that'll be, that'll be nice. Everyone should do that. When it comes to Navi though, and the GPU side of things and the Radeon side of things, I mentioned that I was a little bit disappointed with the information that they came out with. Apart from the announcement of that live stream on June 10th, 
they did confirm that yes, Navi is based on seven nanometer. We already knew that. They're calling this new architecture RDNA or Radeon DNA. So it is not GCN. It is a new architecture that they have built from the ground up with a similar approach to their Zen CPU design philosophy. Uh, they said they focused on efficiency and increasing IPC performance on the GPU side. They've also streamlined the graphics engine and uh, they have some architectural improvements versus Vega that they listed that were a bit vague because their internal AMD numbers versus Vega, but 1.25x performance per clock efficiency improvements and then 1.5x performance per watt improvements. But um, I'm not 100% sure how they got those numbers, so uh, again, they're just sort of some marketing information for now. They did confirm that Navi will use PCI Express Gen 4, and then uh, Navi products will be part of the Radeon RX 5000 series family, which is 5000 because of AMD's 50th birthday, and not because they wanted to jump a few generations ahead of the naming scheme that uh, NVIDIA is currently using for their RTX 2000 series, right? That, that's not at all why they would have done that. Uh, but Lisa did actually show a Navi die. She held it up. Uh, she actually mentioned specifically that it looks small. Uh, I noticed that there's no uh, HBM or high bandwidth memory on there, which was kind of expected as well because that didn't work out very well for them for Vega. Uh, but my question, since I mentioned it's small, is is there going to be a bigger version of Navi? Maybe. That's possible. And then they did show a Navi gaming demo using Strange Brigade and showing that their Navi chip, which is an RX 5000 series, I'm guessing it was an RX 5700 like they used in that last demo, uh, but they're getting 100 to 110 frames per second with the RX 5000 series GPU versus an RTX 2070, which is getting 90 to 100 frames per second. That is about 10% faster for the Navi GPU, but I do want to point out that Strange Brigade is known as being a very AMD friendly title or a very Radeon friendly title um, when it comes to game performance. So again, take that with a grain of salt. But guys, that is all the information I have to share with you for right now. I hope you've enjoyed this video, just trying to boil down that hour and a half long keynote to something that's a bit more palatable for you guys. Hit the thumbs up button if you enjoyed it and stay tuned because I will be doing some more Computex videos this week. Not as many videos as I do when I'm actually at Computex, but I'll just try to pick and choose the things I think are most interesting and share that information with you. Thanks again for watching and we'll see you next time.